Uh, St Mary's has always had a very, very close relationship with the Irish community uh, in London. Uh, but when I came here, I don't want to claim credit for all of it, but because of my adult education background in Irish studies, um, in which uh, the uh, main student body consisted of either Irish-born uh, residents in London or people from a second generation background whose parents were Irish. Uh, I regarded it as part of my role to uh, develop and enhance uh, the links between uh, London's Irish community uh, and St Mary's. So we've actively encouraged uh, s um, mature students, community students, to attend our classes, um, sitting alongside uh, our undergraduates um, in the language classes, in the various undergraduate modules, uh, etc. Uh, we've had very, very close contacts over the years. I'm a member of the uh, board of directors of Hammersmith Irish Cultural Centre. We've had, as I said, very close contacts with that organisation uh, over uh, a number of years. And uh, we hope to expand that, uh, that relationship by basing some St Mary's classes at um, the new centre. Um, at Hammersmith Irish Cultural Centre, but also uh, accrediting, St Mary's will uh, accredit classes provided by the Hammersmith Irish Cultural Centre uh, at their new premises when they open uh, next uh, year. So the, the link between um, London's Irish community and uh, St Mary's University has been very intensive, has been quite lengthy and has been uh, long established and I believe that we have a substantial credibility uh, in that we, we, we've shown ourselves to be open and welcoming to Irish people who come to our classes and in a number of cases have actually then uh, embarked upon uh, an undergraduate degree themselves or uh, more recently have embarked upon our new uh, MA in Irish studies as mature students from the Irish community. But I suppose really it's a quite a different experience, bearing in mind that I've left Ireland over half a century ago and lived all of that time, apart from visiting Ireland or going places around the world on, on holidays, that I've spent all of my time in the UK. Uh, the experience has been very positive from the viewpoint of listening to lectures giving a broader view than the view I might have had myself in previous, because I've always liked reading about history and I've always loved Irish literature, but it was getting um, a view from lectures, but also a view from some of the other master students in our seminars and discussions. So it's been a very uplifting experience. I've thoroughly enjoyed it and would recommend it to anyone. Right, we've, uh, we've established quite um meaningful and quite deep links um, between the two cities. Uh, I've taken the two field trips there um, to uh, Derry. And the reason I've done that is because um, in all courses that I've taught on Irish history, whether it's from the 17th century right up until the uh, immediate past, Derry, London Derry features in nearly every uh, one of those uh, courses. In fact, all of those courses, nearly every week we talk about some aspect uh, of, 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 of the city of Derry. And it seemed logical uh, to, in addition, uh, bringing students to uh, Belfast or Dublin, to actually go to um, Derry, sort of, you know, the fulcrum of, what shall I say, uh, antagonism between Catholic and Protestant, nationalism and unionism, not only in the 17th century, but in the recent past as well, as we all know. Um, so I've taken, as I said, uh, a number of field trips there, and we've established close links with uh, historical, cultural organisations um, in Derry. We've established close links with, for example, the Honourable the Irish Society, which is the uh, now charitable organisation uh, which looks after um, still uh, many uh, cultural uh, monuments uh, in Derry. It uh, dates from the time of the plantation of Ulster in the early 17th century. Uh, and we're actually lucky to be in receipt of bursaries, financial support from the uh, Honourable of the Irish Society, which we can utilise in um, helping out our students, both BA and MA, uh, when they want to do dissertations or theses on some aspect of the city or county of Derry, uh, London Derry. We've also developed contacts with uh, the Museum of uh, Free Derry, 
Uh, the Apprentice Boys of Derry, um, we, we, we have regular contacts with those. Uh, also with uh, cultural organisations such as the Nerve Centre in Derry, uh, whose director, inc incidentally, uh, is John Pito, who is a graduate of Irish studies here at, uh, at St Mary's University. So the links have been going on for quite a long time, and by now they are quite intensive and, and very, very deep and meaningful. We've had two Irish presidents, uh, Mary Robinson and uh, Mary McAleese, uh, visiting St Mary's. Uh, we've also had two Irish ambassadors to the United Kingdom, Bobby McDonough and Daniel Mulhall uh, visit. Um, we've had um, speakers from the world of uh, arts, journalism, politics. For example, we've had uh, the journalist Mary Kenny is uh, a regular visitor to uh, St Mary's. Uh, we've had um, Martin Manser, the uh, former Fianna Fáil minister in the uh, previous Irish government. Uh, we've had Margaret Ritchie, who uh, up until recently was the leader of the uh, Social Democratic and Labour Party in Northern Ireland, the SDLP. We've had journalist Ruth W. Edwards um, and uh, Fanula O'Connor. And we've had filmmaker uh, Lilia Doolan, and that's only a few. So we've had quite a wide variety of uh, guest speakers from a wide variety of backgrounds uh, coming uh, not only from Ireland, but also from amongst the Irish community in this country as well.